become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to talk about a great article that I recently read written by Charles A. Smith, a prominent author from the Silver Era. The article called Bodybuilding Exercises for Weightlifters specifically addresses the differences in muscular development between bodybuilders and Olympic weightlifters without necessarily putting each of the sports down, which I really like because at the time there was a war of words between Joe Wader and Bob Hoffman in their respective magazines, Your Physique and Strength and Health, with uh, each glorifying their sport over the other. Instead, Charles A. Smith points out the strengths and weaknesses of each of the sports and addresses points as to how to improve on each of the practitioner's uh, weaknesses, which in the case of this article was how to improve on the physique of Olympic weightlifters using specific bodybuilding exercises, which is the topic of today's video, and I hope you enjoy it. Now when we look at the physique of an Olympic weightlifter, due to all of the obvious uh, clean and jerk and, and a snatch movements, there's going to be a lot of musculature developed in the thighs, shoulders and back that is obvious, and the arms as well. And it's very different to the appearance of the physique of a bodybuilder. Uh, and when we compare the muscular development, um, Charles A. Smith clearly points out that there is lacking development in the Olympic weightlifter um, in the musculature of the calves, the pectorals, the obliques and rectus abdominis, that is the, abdomen, the, the external abdominal muscles, and finally in the size of the rib box, simply because they are specialized so much in their own particular Olympic weightlifting movements. And he recommends uh, certain exercises taken from bodybuilding to uh, improve, I guess, the physique uh, of the Olympic weightlifter, which should also improve their overall function. Now the first exercise recommended by Charles A. Smith for the weightlifter is the incline bench press as performed by silver era greats Clarence Ross, George Eiferman and Steve Reeves. It's a great exercise for tying in the triceps, deltoid and pectoral muscles and more importantly it will actually help in the overhead work performed by the Olympic weightlifter such as the clean and jerk etc. He also recommends using the barbell because it is the same apparatus that an Olympic weightlifter would use. Although for variation, he also um, does state that, of course, dumbbells can be used. Um, to increase the resistance, uh, once the exercise becomes easier, he recommends, instead of increasing the, the poundage, to increase the angle of the bench first. And once you've exhausted the full range of the incline, um, then you should actually start adding poundage, going back down to a low angle on the incline and working on increasing the angle again with a new poundage. And to start off, you can start off with three sets of eight reps, so working up to 15 repetitions of each set. Now to correct any lack of development in the calves, he recommends the calf raise. And what I found a bit weird was his recommendation of using as much poundage as your heaviest squat or deep knee bend or your heaviest clean and jerk. Now, I would definitely not recommend this at all um, because it is way too heavy. I mean, most people can squat anywhere between three and 400 pounds or a clean and jerk you know up to 300 pounds and i think to start off with such a great weight is uh, asking for trouble uh, so instead i would say you could work up to those kinds of weights but um, i don't necessarily agree with charles a smith's uh, recommendation to start off with such uh, incredibly heavy poundages however i do agree that one should use a block of wood six inches in height and placing a barbell across your shoulder or using a calf race machine like you have probably access nowadays in most gyms, you can perform uh, high repetition sets, initially starting off with two sets of 15 reps and as Charles A. Smith puts it, working up to two sets of 30 to 40 repetitions. The next exercise that Charles A. Smith recommends is, as he calls it, the side bend to bring out the rectus abdominis and the oblique muscles. Now, I wouldn't necessarily call this a side bend. I would actually call it an incline twisting sit-up. But nevertheless, the exercise explained in the article is excellent at bringing out the external 
uh, abdominal muscles. He does point out that weightlifters of the past, such as bronze era strongmen, who used to perform single arm lifts, had great abdominal uh, muscular definition uh, and development. However, seeing that by the 40s and 50s, weightlifters were restricted to only two-handed lifts, this kind of um, took away from their abdominal development because it took away single arm lifts um, altogether. So nevertheless, the exercise uh, explained, which um, I'll now describe, is excellent at bringing out the external abdominal muscles. You would lie on an inclined abdominal board, hands clasped behind your head, and you would sit up with your knees slightly bent and you would, the aim would be to bring the outside of your opposite elbow to the outside of the opposite knee. So for example, the outside of your right elbow to the outside of the left knee and alternate. And you would perform initially three sets of eight reps, working up to three sets of 15 repetitions. Now for rib box development, of course, what is recommended by Charles S. Smith is what is recommended by most Silver Era uh, authors, and that is the breathing squat supersetted with the bent arm pullover. If you haven't heard of it before, the breathing squat is, as the name suggests, you breathe and squat during the exercise. You would use a weight that you could handle for eight to 10 repetitions initially. And before coming down, you would take three breaths. So you breathe in once, twice, three times, even up to five times, five deep breaths. And on the last breath, you breathe in, squat down, come up so you go down to the squat then you come back up and you breathe out and that's your first squat that's your first repetition and you would repeat that again you would do three to five deep breaths on the breath in squat down come up and then breathe out and that's your second rep and you would do three sets of eight to ten reps initially uh, focusing on really filling in the lungs and then eventually work up the repetitions to perform 15 to 20 repetitions. Of course, you can do three sets if you want, which is quite a lot, or just one set. Um, and after you are able to do 20 repetitions with that particular uh, poundage, you would increase your poundage. As mentioned before, you would superset the breathing squat with the bent arm pullover. Ideally, you would have your partner hand you the bar. Um, you would lie on a bench with your head hanging off the end of the bench as shown in the diagram and you would handle the bar with a medium grip and lower the barbell in an arc towards the floor and then return it to the chest in an arc-like motion, again, as shown in the diagram. As you actually uh, bring the bar down towards the floor behind your head, you wanna breathe in slowly and uh, then you wanna fill your lungs as much as possible. And as you bring the bar up over your head and down towards your chest, you want to breathe out slowly. The idea is that this is a breathing exercise and it is not necessarily to be um, handled with heavy poundage. When you're working on expanding the ribcage, you really want to work on breathing. You want to really feel your lungs as much as possible. And therefore, you don't want to be thinking and stressing over a heavy poundage. You want to use a light barbell in this case using the bent arm pullover uh, to really work on breathing. Another exercise recommended by Charles A. Smith especially is uh, for the forearms using the wrist roller. Um, in particular, he recommends working on the supinated version of the wrist rolling action simply because most Olympic lifts are performed with a pronated grip and so you get quite a, a lot of pronated work. And to balance the physique out, you want to do a lot of supination. So you will stand up on a bench with a wrist roller with your upper arms pinned against the side of your body. That is having your elbows in, hands in supinated position. And then you will then wind the weight up and then wind it back down again. Of course, you can use different grips, uh, supinated and pronated if you like. But the idea is to get more supination in there. And you would start light with a five pound disc and increase this over time. Now, an exercise that is not really seen at all these days is the neck bridge, another one recommended by Charles A. Smith um, to be performed for weightlifters, seeing that back then, Silver Era legends actually did work a lot on their necks. Again, it is not seen nowadays. To uh, perform the neck bridge, it is recommended to use a pillow. You will lie on the ground, completely flat with your, with your back flat on the floor, knees up, and uh, you would push 
up onto the top of your head by arching your back as shown in the diagram. So once you are on the top of your head after arching your back, you are in the neck bridge. You would have your heels as close to your buttocks as possible in the starting position and basically bridge. You would bridge up uh, rolling onto your head right, by arching your back. And you want to aim for 10 to 15 bridges before using any further resistance. This is very important and it will take a while. Charles A. Smith definitely states that this will take a while to develop because the neck is uh, not that easy to develop. It takes a while to get strength there. And to prevent injury, you don't want to rush any neck work either. Take your time. Um, he actually does state, aim for three sets of 10 reps initially. Um, I would actually state, your, your first aim should be to perform one set of 10 reps and work on that slowly to increase it to um, 15 reps and then start doing several sets of uh, 10 reps and eventually work to three sets of 15 reps. And only after you can perform three sets of 15 reps with your own body weight, would you then add any further poundage. So there you have it. There are the list of exercises recommended by the great author Charles A. Smith for weightlifters to balance their physiques, especially seeing that some may lack development in certain areas. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I think it's got a lot of great information, even just for bodybuilders in general, because uh, let's face it, a lot of us don't have great calves, great forearms, or great neck. And uh, I think even as a as an amateur bodybuilder myself, I can take quite a lot from this article. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Leave me a comment and thank you for watching. If you'd like to support my work, please donate via PayPal or you can become a patron. You can also visit my website, www.goldenerabookworm, for out-of-print courses and books from the bronze, silver, and golden era of bodybuilding. I'll leave you with this great shot of John Grimmick, who was truly a complete athlete, weightlifter, bodybuilder, everything. He was a superstar. Awesome shot here of John Grimmick with everyone admiring. That's the way it should be, shouldn't it? Anyway, that's it for me. Hope you've enjoyed the video. This is the golden era bookworm. Bye for now. Hi everybody, I just want to recommend this phenomenal book, Vince's Secret Locker, volume number two by Carl Coyne. I've been looking at this for about four weeks and I can't put it down. If you get a chance, check it out. He also has a part one that I, I highly recommend also. Uh, Vince was the trainer of the stars and had an amazing, interesting gym that today there's still not equipment like, uh, like it around. It was all made out of wood. Uh, he'll be on our radio show coming up probably in the next couple weeks or so. Have a great day and again, highly recommend this book.